Hi. The last video was a little overview how sidechain ducking can be achieved in general. Now we go into some specific examples and how to overcome some hurdles. One question I got was about how to sidechain something through the kick, which is included in a complex drum loop. I have deliberately chosen some non 4 on the floor loops, which exclude the standard usage of transport sync tools. Using a compressor would be an obvious choice. Easy to set up and it reacts automatically to the drum loop, which I use as sidechain input. When looking at the graph, the problem becomes immediately apparent. The compressor reacts to the whole drum loop, not only to the kick. This is of course not wished and the resulting compression curve is far too busy. I need somehow to isolate the kick as sidechain input. I patcherize the fruity limiter by holding shift when replacing the plugin with patcher. I need a separate input on the limiter and my sidechain signal from the drum loop. Before I connect the sidechain source to the limiter, I insert first an EQ into patcher. I change the routing to be able to hear the drum loop only with the EQ settings. By low passing the drum loop, I can get rid of most of the other sounds playing and can reduce the signal enough to have nearly just the kick playing. It lacks now of the high frequency content, but for sidechaining that shall not concern us. To make this clear, this is of course not the kick sound or sound of the drum loop which will be hearable afterwards. This is just used as sidechain trigger for the compressor and will afterwards not be audible at all. The compression graph looks now exactly like I want it, reacting to the kick only. With this example, this technique works fine. Let's try with a different loop. This drum loop includes an 808 baseline too. Our low pass method from before doesn't work so well in this case as both the bass and the kick use the lower frequencies and with the previous settings I get both triggering the compressor. I try to restrict the frequency range more and isolating the kick without the 808 which plays even lower than the kick. These settings seem to do the trick. Unfortunately, I have been glad too early. The problem with including bass lines is that they sometimes change the pitch. Again, unfortunately, the bass line plays now in the same frequency range I have narrowed down for isolating the kick. This loop doesn't make it that easy for me like the last one did. If restricting the frequency range to isolate the kick doesn't work for some reasons, there's just one way left recreating the kick rhythm manually. One way would be to put automation clips at the corresponding places. These clips can be routed then to volume knobs of plugins to simulate the sidechain ducking. Luckily, it's most of the time quite easy to identify the kick hits by just looking at the waveform. Another way would be to use MIDI triggers for the envelope controller. A great help is the background waveform option in FL Studio's Piano Roll Editor. Again, it's quite easy to identify the kick hits from just looking at the waveform display.
These MIDI notes now trigger the envelope in the controller, which again can be linked to volume knobs of plugins to simulate the sidechain effect, exactly where the kick in the loop happens. In the last video, we were looking in first place at the different methods how to trigger the sidechain. Now let's dive a bit deeper in different options to duck the signal away. Here's a new example with no sidechaining at all. The bass does not leave much of the kick except for the initial transient and pushes it more into the background. I already inserted an envelope controller and recreated the rhythm of the kick of the loop. I link the first articulator to the volume knob of Fruity Balance. With this side chaining, the kick seems suddenly to be louder and much better to identify than before. But does it always have to be a radical strike? The problem with such kind of side chaining is the pumping effect. Sometimes this can be wished, but sometimes not. What options do we have to reach enough ducking to get a clear mix, but not having this effect immediately noticeable? In the first example, when I restricted the loop to the kick by simple low passing it, got clear that the main energy of kicks happened to be in the lower frequency range. Sidechain ducking just means to push a second signal out of the way of the main signal. But this doesn't automatically mean pushing away the whole signal. If two sounds conflict with each other only in a certain part of the frequency spectrum, there's actually no need for ducking away the rest of the signal too. The main energy of the kick sits in the lower frequency range. What about using a high pass filter to just get rid of the same frequency range from the bass? And of course, just at the points in time when the kick is actually playing. The high pass filter suppresses the low frequency of the bass to make room for the main frequencies of the kick, but without eliminating the whole bass sound for this period of time. Higher parts of the bass are still hearable and give us a more cohesive sound without these extreme interruptions. Especially for such sustaining sounds like in my example here, this sounds less gated. Using a high pass filter is on the other side a quite drastic effect when being moved that quickly. And this rapid movement can sometimes be noticeable in a bad way. That's why I'm now trying a less drastic method by only automating the volume of the peak filter in the critical frequency range. works fine. The volume automation is even less noticeable than automating the high pass filter's frequency and leaves big parts of the bass intact. A third way would be by using our new frequency splitter. I set it to two bands and link the volume of the lower band to an articulator of my envelope controller.
works fine as well. This ducks away the whole range of the low frequencies, but isn't noticeable in a bad way at all. The latter two methods are in any case preferable to automating a high pass filter's frequency, as they produce less artifacts in the sound. Ducking away just parts of the sound instead of the whole signal gives us something which is called invisible sidechain. In the next example, it's getting even more obvious. What if I need something like this invisible sidechain, but I like to use a normal compressor? I set up my compressor routing the same way like I did before when I isolated the kick of this drum loop with the low pass of an EQ. I duplicated the bass pad to a new track and let them play after each other. I copy the patcher instance with my sidechain routing to the duplicated track. On the new track I insert a frequency splitter into my patcher. But this time I send the low and high band to different outputs. That's my low band. and my high band. The latter I leave connected directly to the output, as I will not process it at all. The low band though, gets routed to the limiter. With this routing, just the low frequencies of the bass get sidechain ducked by the compressor. Note that the compressor settings and all timings are the same on both. This is how we had it already before. And this is our invisible sidechain. Did you hear how extreme the first method suddenly sounds when the sequence loops back to the complete sidechain? Ducking the complete signal? Ducking just the lows. Of course it depends what kind of signal you need to duck away. With shorter bass hits, the difference between the normal and the invisible sidechain are mostly much less noticeable. But with sustaining sounds like pads or long bass notes, it's a nice option to make the effect less noticeable. As well, it depends on the kind of music you are working on. In many genres like EDM, the pumping effect is a part of the wished sound and shall add the rhythm of the kick to the other sounds too. In other styles, it's preferable to get just enough headroom for mixing best without even hearing the effect at all. Again, it's important to know about the available options to be able to choose the right method for the job. That's it for today. Some simple alternatives for your sidechains. Thank you for watching.